So Radio Winchcombe, it's time to bring on my next guest as part of the Bad Girls special. Uh, he played the governor, Mr. Neil Grayling. Let's say hello to actor James Gaddas. Hello. Hi. Uh, How are you? Not too bad. Sun's out. Everything's uh, looking good. So say thank you so much for, uh, for for joining us on the show today. And I mean, Neil Grayling, you joined the show. Um, kind of mm. the show was you know well established by the time you joined. So when yeah. you when you found out you you were joining the show, how did you feel about it? Um, I was over the moon. I'd, uh, it was strange, actually, because we used to film down at uh, Three Mills, and I literally, I literally came out of an interview for um, uh, a football program. It wasn't Footballers' Wives; it was one of the others. Um, and the next day, I was back again visiting uh, the Bad Girls office, and uh, you know, it was it, it just went from there. So it was uh, it was kind of. Every two minutes, I seem to be at three mills, and suddenly I, there I was, you know, in behind bars in the prison, and it was uh, it was very quick and very exciting. And you got to be involved in some hard hitting storylines, of course, uh, with mm. Jim Fenner, um, with the with the homophobia yeah. uh, storyline. Was that quite tough to play? Because that's quite a hard hitting uh, subject to to play on TV. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was. I think there's very much. I think it's easier these days. There's a lot more um, sort of openness about those sort of issues within uh, TV programs. But I think at the time it was, especially given the angle that was taken with us, because we had Jim's homophobia, but then you had Neil, um, in effect, date raping Jim. You know, yeah. now whether or not he had reason to or not is immaterial. You know, but. Uh, I think it was a brave uh, sort of angle to take that Neil was quite predatory, you know, at that time as well. Um, the easy way to go is just to make everybody, you know, on one side of the argument, um, you know, sort of terribly uh, sort of easy going and wiser than white. And, you know, we didn't take that angle. So it was, um, it was certainly a, a great piece to play. And at the time. it was very different with, with with this feud because before that we had mm. seen Jim Fenner feud with with females, obviously Helen Stewart, mm. uh, Yvonne Atkins. So this was the first time that Jim's yeah. actually had a feud with with a male, which kind of uh, was was different because he's used to getting his, his own way. He thinks he can just bully people into it. But Neil Grayling actually That's stood up to Jim. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it was. I think what was interesting was that, um, as you say, Jim was used to getting his own way. And and he felt very much when Neil came in, given that Neil was, you know, sort of progressive and metropolitan, that he would be able to you know, sort of manipulate uh, the new governor in a way that would serve Jim's ends. Um, and Neil was, you know, nowhere near as, as powerful and strong as, as Jim was, but he had his own way of doing things. So he was much more, he was much more Riago to Jim's Othello, if, you know, if I can go classical on it. Um, he would sooner do things in a mani- manipulative way. So I think it, I think that was the interesting thing. It's like fencing, there's a there's a wonderful um, fight in Rob Roy um, that they do at the end of the film, and it's a claymore against an epee, okay. you know, a fencing sword. And I think it was very much that, you know, you had Jim sort of bludgeoning away, and Neil sort of sort of working between the uh, the covers, as it were. And obviously, it came to a stage where it was Neil Grayling that brought Jim Fenner down, only temporarily, mm. but he did manage to to bring yeah. Jim down. And it, it was a storyline that gripped us all. We got him down. Yeah, we got him down in the end. And I think most of that was down to Karen, to be honest. But um, I think it was. I think the way that they the writers took it with Jim was that you know he reached that point where he was. As far as he was concerned, he was going to be, you know, sort of anything that he did, he could do and get away with. Yeah. So even, you know, sort of running somebody down and then trying to plant the blame on somebody else, he could get away with because he'd gotten away with everything else. And, you know, he just took that step too far. Now, for me as a viewer, one of my favourite scenes, and mm. I would love to know how it was for you actually filming it, was the explosion and fire. It was like something mm. out of a blockbuster movie. Tell us about, you know, the time when you were filming <laughs> that, and, and how was it? Was it was it just like a, a movie? It, it did feel like that at times. I mean, it was pretty uncomfortable because we had, uh, you know, it was, it was on the floor a lot of the time. It was very wet, you know, they kept dousing the set down. Um, but yeah, they went to town on it. And the wonderful thing for me was that um, I had a, a stunt double called Neil uh, Finnegan, who I've he's stunt double. He's covered for me as a stunt double on five or six things, you know. Um, and we look very, very similar. So he was out normally with those sort of things. You you shoot from you know an actor's back, and the stunt double sort of keeps his face covered and everything else. But Neil is such a good cover for me and a double for me that 
we were able to actually have him walking up the corridor and be blown up from, you know, 15, 20 feet and still wow. get away with him looking like that. So, you know, that was great for me. I could tell everybody, you know, yeah, it was really hard being blown up, you know, <laughs> pretend to take the credit for it. But yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a fascinating scene to do. And it, the only, the only difficult thing was being pushed on the trolley through the flames because, you know, health and safety said that you had to have your, face covered with a, a wet towel as you went and that was the most unpleasant part of it because you can't see a thing and it yeah. everything's suddenly getting very hot and you know so yeah and um, when you're out in say you know you're doing a your shopping or you're out in, in, in public mm. do people still remember you from your time in bad girls yeah they do and that, that's the strange thing because that's uh you know we're coming up 10 years ago but that is still the the thing that um weirdly kids it's tracy beaker you know, I mean, yeah. went from Tracy Beaker, and <laughs> with adults, it, it's always bad girls. Um, although <laughs> nine times out of ten, I must be honest, they think I'm Jim Fenner. So <laughs> I think bad girls, Jim Fenner, and you're like, no, it's not Jim Fenner. But you know, I'm not going to say anything. So you know, I just sign. Have to be honest. I'm off my now, I'm not sure what your thoughts uh, are on this, but when it came mm. to killing Neil Grayling off in, in the final series, it mm. was done in a very mm. Random way. It was just kind of the first uh, episode. He, you know, he, he's in and he's suddenly gone again. Yeah. I mean, what were your thoughts on yeah, that? Yeah, I, I, it was a strange one. You know, I mean, it, it's always nice to have closure. Um, you know, because you you come to the end of a contract and you know that's kind of you know the end, as it were. But because of the way that uh, series work and they plan ahead and everything else, we kind of you know that no actor ever has a job for life so you reach a point where you think yep storylines kind of come to an end and you were aware of it you know as they were bringing various people in who were taking over running the wing and everything else which is where I'd spend an awful lot of time um, so you know the writing's on the wall and that's that's fine um, but I, I, I don't know I mean I felt we finished the series and then that was it we were done and then suddenly there was a call to say you know could you come in for the first episode of the new series, which I think was to kind of ease the new the new governors in, which is all well and good. And it wasn't until, you know, you're actually finished the script and everything else that you see, yeah, I'm kind of dead on the floor behind a desk. So it was it was a a strange one in a way, but equally, you know, it is always good for an actor after five or six series to know that there is a definitive end, you know, and when you're sort of hanging around, you know, I did a medical drama many years ago um, called Medics for ITV, and I still have this image that they're going to bring it back and I'll be a consultant by then, you know, I'll be a professor. So, so. so it's, in some ways, it's always nice to finish off, but yeah. I'd love, love Neil to have gone out in more, more of a, a kind of an extravagant way than just dying from Legionnaire's disease behind a desk. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. And I know since Bad Girls, you've done uh, various TV appearances and a lot of theatre work as well. So mm. are you enjoying mm. the, the work that you're doing at the moment? Yeah, very much. Um, I, you know, it's like anything, you know, you, you as a working actor, you, you're just grateful to work, you know. And um, I think Bad, Bad Girls opened a lot of doors theatre-wise for me. And weirdly, straight off that, it was musical after musical after musical. So, you know, that was the kind of thing that... I got stuck into the West End in with Mamma Mia and the girls and Billy Elliot and uh, Spamalot. Um, and I'd never sung before, so, you know, and audiences all over the country must be thinking, I wish you'd never sing again. But, you know, it was it was exciting to do. And, you know, I've just finished touring for the National in a, a political drama, and that's been terrific fun to do. So, you know, it, it's, as a working actor, you know, it's just great to have those abilities, uh, to, those opportunities to do. And, you know, and I thank Bad Girls for that because that opened the doors. Well, James, thank you so much for, for joining us on a Bad Girls special. It really is a pleasure to have you on the show. No, no worries at all. Thank you very much.